All right, guys, welcome to Flav Orion's MMA Show. I'm your host, Flav Orion, brought to you by Four Corner Sports. Guys, UFC Louisville is officially um, beyond us. The or UFC was in Louisville at the KFC Yum Center. Really thought, I think honestly, they should have just named it the KFC Center. Sounds a lot more better, but the fact that you have to put Yum onto after KFC is, I don't know, it just sounds like a little bit extra in my opinion. But anyways, it was headlined by Nasruddin Imaval versus Jared Cannonier. Um, it was rated as the highest um, gate for a UFC fight night in U.S. history. I think they ended up exceeding over $2 million um, in uh, in gate revenue for um, the UFC, which is pretty good. But I don't really count too much upon that. I know a lot of people are like, oh my God, the UFC is doing fantastic. It's just inflation, in my, my opinion. I went to UFC Long Island a couple years ago, and I think I got a ticket for like 12140 a ticket, and we were in the 100 section. Obviously, within every year in this country, everything goes up in value. So I don't really count too much by, by, um beyond it plus i think there was maybe like a couple hundred tickets that weren't on that weren't sold from what i saw on Ticketmaster. but jerry cannonier versus nasa the aim of all jerry cannonier last time we saw him was against marvin vittori he is 40 years old um recovering from an uh, acl injury and after the aim of off who um you know for the former champ sean strickland last year he Ended up uh, defeating Roman Delice, uh what's it called, earlier in the year by majority decision. And, yeah, he says that he is on his avenge to come back and, you know, climb up the rankings. And this was a, a perfect um, a perfect matchmaking opportunity for him because Jared, Karen, Jared Kananier has been, you know, flirting with top five the majority of, of his... Uh, middleweight career and after the aim of off you know is somebody who looks like he could be a problem um as he is climbing up the middleweight ranks but it was a five five round fight first round jared kenanier uh imposed a little bit of the power i think uh uh Imovov was trying to distinguish you know range and stuff like that jared hits like a truck former heavyweight um former light heavyweight too so it's actually kind of remarkable but that only him and Conor McGregor are the only two fighters in the UFC history that actually has a knockout in three different weight classes. So that's something to, um, you know, know. And yeah, Jared, um, good fighter in, in all. You know, wins round one, round two. Close fight. I believe I had it as... Um, I know I put it on Twitter, but I believe I gave that to Imovov because Imovov was, was doing well on the striking aspect. Let's see, what did I have it as? Yeah, I had it as Imovov. Um, Imovov ended up taking round two, um, and then round three, you just saw Imovov, you know, was able to get past the leg kicks because Jared was, you know, attacking that lead leg on Imovov, and Imovov was just very wasn't wasn't able to pick up and tell on the leg strikes. I believe uh, Jared within like the first two or three rounds ended up landing like 31 leg kicks which is a lot right there and i, I understand jerry Kernier is no alex Pereira. i know alex Pereira needs maybe at most like two leg kicks to really numb you um but yeah jerry Kernier was attacking that lead leg uh Imavov was you know switching stances at some points but you know he was able to get himself through uh jerry Kernier. um and then round four, round, round three, you know, it was more of the same. Round four, this is where the controversy happens because um, Jason Herzog, very good ref. Fortunately, I've seen this a couple of times, and I had to rewind the, the matchup. And every time I see it, I feel like it gets worse and worse and worse. You have uh, Nasruddin Imovov hurt Jerry Karanir, wobbles him. I think he catches him right on the jawline. He, his equilibrium is immediately off. You see Jared, you know, stumbling and stuff like that. And if Jason Herzog stops the fight right there, I completely get it. Um, Jared, you know, gets his bearings, throws a right hook, naturally ends up throwing a left hook, and then immediately stops the fight Jason Herzog. And he's like, 
doesn't feel like um, Jer Jerry Cannonier is capable of fighting and defending himself, and the broadcast, was, you know, was was like, "What's going on? Why would you stop it?" Fans were upset. They were booing fighters on Twitter. They were saying like, "This is a terrible stoppage." Some of them were saying that, "I, uh, what do you want? Do you want this guy to get flatlined?" Uh, you got fighters like uh, Chris Curtis and I forgot who else. It was maybe like four or five fighters that ended up saying that. But overall, the majority did not like this, the decision of J of uh, Jason Herzog stopping the fight. Jared Cannonier was hurt, all right? And maybe if the fight continued, Nasruddin does flatline him. But I get it when Jason Herzog stops the fight because he feels like Jared is, is going to not be able to defend himself later on. But you have to allow some of these fighters to fight um to fight off their shield and you know go out that way sometimes you know it's different if he would have stopped the fight maybe like three seconds earlier but the fact that he waited that three seconds you know jared was able to recover and narsadine you know wasn't like going off on him like that so unfortunate stoppage for jared cannonier um he gets the loss narsadine gets the win i believe he moves to like 13 and 4 if I'm not mistaken, six, uh, fourteen and four. I'm sorry, six and two in the promotion. Only losses was to Phil Hawes and Sean Strickland. Um, now he moves himself into the top five, top six of uh, middleweight. Um, what's next for Nasruddin? Honestly, he's got to fight in that France card. If I'm uh, Dana White, if I'm Sean Shelby, uh, Mick Maynard, and Hunter Campbell, I am putting Nasruddin Imovov. As the cold main, if not the main event, depending if Cyril Gaon cannot fight on that France court in September. And I am putting Nasruddin Imovov against Paulo Costa. Paulo Costa has a huge name. Many fans like him. I would not put Sean Strickland there. I know he called for Sean Strickland. Sean Strickland's in the sit-out until uh, he's able to get a title shot. Um, Paulo Costa is on a two-fight losing streak. And I believe that he needs to get himself a win. And it's a tough task, but... Nasruddin Imovov is a striker. He's a brawler. He's going to get in your face. He is not going to um, make you backpedal for 25 minutes. And I feel like that would be the perfect matchup you put in France. As for Jared Cannonier, I think his title aspirations are gone. He's, he's not going to be, be able to fight for a title ever again. He blew his chance with, with uh, Israel Adesanya. He was being very passive and very, um, very low volume. Get Israel Adesanya to the point where now International Fight Week in 2022, many fans left before before the final bell. Um, I think they mean they're leaving like in the, the fourth round, some some in the third round, and it was a bad look. And many people didn't blame Israel, which they shouldn't. They blamed it on Jared Cannonier, and that stigma still holds. And yeah, he's never getting a title shot ever again. Um, he's going to be fighting these up and comers. I feel like he's going to end up fighting uh, Anthony Fluffy Hernandez. I feel like either that or Kyle Baraglio. But yeah, this really hurts uh, Jared Cannonier's career. And I won't be surprised if he has maybe like one or two more fights left because he's not getting another title shot after this performance. Call main event. You had Dustin Jacoby against the uh, returning Dominic Reyes. Dominic Reyes has been out of the UFC for two years. Uh, he has a, he was supposed to fight Carlos Olberg. Had some like blood clot issues. Um, that fight got postponed. Now you got Olberg fighting Jamal Hill. Call main event for UFC 303 at the end of the month. Reyes, you know, UFC wants to put him out there. See what he has left. And he gave him a nice favorable matchup against Dustin Jacoby. He actually came as the underdog. I did not play this fight. Um, no money line action on either guy. I actually just played this fight Fight to go by decision. Fight to not go to the decision. Honestly, it didn't even end up. It did not even touch the second round. Um, Reyes and Jacoby from the start was just, you know, two. it was like two cars crashing into each other. Uh, Jacoby putting that pressure on Reyes. Reyes, you know, maneuvering around on the cage and then sniping him with that left hand. And he has famously knocked out Chris Weidman and many others out. And he even knocked down Ovin St. Prude when he was um, in his heyday. Um, hurts Justin Jacoby. Justin Kobe backpedals, and then you see Dominic Reyes run across the octagon, you know, hammer away with a heavy onslaught, and then referee pulls Dominic Reyes off, and then Dominic Reyes has actually done it, guys. First win since 2019 in October 
Friday night in Boston since he put out Chris Weidman to get to secure himself a title shot. Dominic Reyes gets his first win in nearly five years. The man has went through a lot. Uh, yes, I believe that he ended up beating John Jones, and that stigma that stigma has always carried through him. And he has finally ended up getting a victory. The man has been through hell. The man lost. The man technically lost to John Jones, lost to Jan Bohovic, getting knocked out in Abu Dhabi, getting flatlined and almost killed by that spinning um, elbow by Yuri Prohashka, getting knocked out by Ryan Spann, all right, and now finally, finally gets a victory um, in the, the light heavyweight division. Uh, and honestly, it was w- very well warranted, gets it. Now, what's next for him, to be honest? And many people are seeing him versus Anthony Smith. I believe that is a fight to make. If they cannot make Anthony Smith versus Dominic Reyes, the fight to make is Dominic Reyes versus Nikita Krylov. Nikita Krylov will bring it to Dominic Reyes, similar to, to what just Dustin Jacoby ended up doing to Reyes. And Reyes has the power, has the ability to knock anybody out in this division. So, very interested to see what this transpires for Dominic Reyes' career. But I'm very happy that he got it. It's, not, it, it's somebody that I wanted him for him to, to hold the belt. It was sad when he got knocked out by Jan Bohovic. But man, oh man, this just felt right. And it felt good as an MME fan. And the MME gods ended up awarding him with his victory. Next up, the featured fight, Raul Rosas Jr. versus Ricky Tercios. Raul Rosas Jr. was supposed to fight Ricky Tercios in Mexico City in February, but unfortunately, uh, he felt sick. Um, he couldn't make it to the octagon. Ricky Tercios was mad. They were going to rebook that fight for the week after. Never happened. Never came to fruition. Fast forward from February to June. Now this fight is officially happening. Ricky Tercios was very pissed off that he ended up going to Mexico City for no reason. Um, and... At the start of the fight, Raul Rosa Jr. wanted to touch gloves. Ricky Tercio said, nope, I ain't touching gloves with you. He screamed out, you know, F you. Well, obviously, he said more than that. And then throws an axe. Well, he throws a, a high leg kick. And then on they go. And then Raul Rosa Jr. En- ended up capitalizing. Takes him down because Ricky Tercio has grandpa hips. And he cannot, t- he cannot defend not even one takedown for his life. Has one of the worst takedown defenses in UFC history. Um, grounds and pounds. Um, Tercios actually was able to grab the, the back of Raul Rosas Jr. At, at some point. You know, ends up getting the RNC. Secures it. But, unfortunately, wasn't tight enough. Um, was able to maneuver around. And then you see Raul Rosas Jr. turns around. And, you know, grounds and pounds. On they go into the round two. More of the same. Raul Rosa Jr. takes him down. Um, and then Terce Hughes is not able to get back onto his feet. Like I said, one of the worst takedown defenses um, in USC history. Raul Rosa Jr. this time grabs onto the back of, of Terce Hughes, And then he does what Terce Hughes couldn't do. He ended up getting the submission and making Terce Hughes tap. Raul Rosa Jr. secures the victory. He now is, I believe, 3-1 and one in the UFC now. Um, only loss was against Christian Rodriguez. Defeats Terrence Mitchell in un- under a minute. Defeats Raul Rosa, uh, defeats uh, Ricky Tercios in 2 minutes and 22 seconds. So, really surprised that... Not really surprised, but really happy that... Um, Raul Rosas Jr. ends up uh, getting the victory. What's next for him? I feel like he needs a lot more grooming before he ends up getting that push. The I know the UFC is pushing him as the teenager, the 19-year-old. At some point, that's eventually going to fade. Raul Rosas Jr., um, at this point, he needs, you know, like no more than like top 40 prospects to be fight- for him to be fighting at that level. That's the highest I would take him. I would keep him around like that anywhere that's somebody like a top 50-ish type of fighter. No, Nothing below top 40 because of the fact that I think that uh, if he was to do this against like a Hani Yaya, Yaya, right? And they secure the back of uh, Rosas Jr. R- R- Hani Yaya is submitting Raul Rosas Jr. Raul Rosas Jr. has a lot of uh, stuff that he needs to sharpen his tools with. 
and I think that he's just not ready for a higher competition. But this was excellent matchmaking on their end. I think he should just be be the tough killer. He should be, you know, fighting people that just came out of tough and just, you know, running through them. And then um, lastly, we had a couple of fights, but I'm going to get through these. The, the fight that stood out to me the most, honestly, was Bruno Ferreira. Um, it's not going to win knockout of the year, but Bruno Ferreira versus D Dustin Solfitz. Uh, Bruno Ferreira ends up, you know, I felt like this fight was never going to make make it to the scorecards, but Solzfest and, and Bruno Ferreira went at it both in in round one, and honestly, it didn't even, you know, it didn't finish, it didn't even go to round two. Uh, Solzfest, you know, hurt Ferreira, uh, Ferreira ends up going right back at it, spinning back fist one, you know, stumbles him. And then spinning back fist number two, hit. It was actually not a spinning back fist, but more of a spinning elbow. Catches him right on the jaw, almost, um, has him against the fence. And Jason Herzog was like, "Nope, that's enough." Um, overall, the card it was okay. It was a fun watch, to be honest. But now next week we got uh, Tesoro Tyra versus Alice Perez. I don't think that's going to be a fun watch compared to this. Fortunately, that that is a 10 p.m. start time. So, car is probably not going to finish up until like 1 a.m. Um, on the East Coast. But, yeah, we are on the road to Saudi Arabia on June 22nd. And then June 29th, it is Connor versus uh, Michael Chandler. And this summer is supposed to be having, you know, really good uh, fight cards. So, we got to get past uh, Alex Perez versus Tosuro Tyra. And then we are on to bigger and better cards. But thank you for tuning in, and I will see you guys next time. Until then, guys, I'm Flavio Oriana, and I am signing out. Have a good one.